This week on the show, we have pro MMA fighter Zion Clark. Despite being born without legs due to a rare disorder called Caudal Regression Syndrome, he was named the fastest man on two hands by the Guinness Book of Records. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of learning that before you try to convince anyone of your talents, worth, or abilities, first convince the most important person in your life, yourself. Most people go into the world desperate to prove their worthiness, talent, and capabilities to everyone they meet. But in reality, the only person that you must truly convince of your worthiness and talent is yourself. Why? Because once we are convinced of our own capabilities, it becomes easy to step into the world with an unshakable confidence that comes when we convince ourselves of our own potential. Successful people are convinced of their own potential well before they try to pitch their ideas or prove themselves to the world. At the end of the day, you must be your own cheerleader. So before feeling the need to convince anyone, do the inner work by giving yourself the permission to truly believe and celebrate your own greatness. After all, when we look at ourselves as our biggest competition rather than anyone else, we look within to find self-validation. As the saying goes, I am not in competition with anyone but myself. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, your documentary won several awards, despite you know you trying not to be an inspiration, but you are yeah. an inspiration around the world. Uh, how does it feel being a role model all over the world? Ah, uh, it's a good <laughs> feeling, you know. Every country that I go to, I have a, I have millions of fans and stuff like that. It's really great, you know. And I appreciate every single one of them, you know. And uh, you know the fact that I'm able to affect people on such a worldwide level is uh you know it's uh with that being said you know i need i thought that you know i could still just do what i want to do but at the end of the day you know there's a bigger purpose there's a bigger meaning to what i'm doing and i see that and i definitely take advantage of what i could use with my power to affect people on a bigger scale uh but at the same time i'm trying to just live my life still as it never happened you know it's just trying to be Zion. Me, so. Wardrobe provided by Le Chateau. Next up on the show, we have American wrestler, martial artist, and motivational speaker Zion Clark. Despite being born without legs due to a rare disorder called Claudel Regression Syndrome, he was named the fastest man on two hands by the Guinness Book of Records. Today, Zion is using his platform to exemplify his motto, No Excuses. When I was born, my mother gave me up for adoption. I lived in about seven or eight foster homes. I got starved and beaten a lot. He had no family. He had no stability in his life. That was a recipe for disaster. I just decided I don't want to feel like I'm weak or anything like that. Wrestling is the oldest sport known to man. It's two human beings imposing their will on one another. Lean back, lean back. Nice job, Zion. Other teams would make comments to other wrestlers. He worked so hard and he thought he failed, but he was one of the biggest successes that I've ever had. Zion, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I am doing amazing. As I was telling you before, I'm really excited to talk to you. You have such an inspirational story and uh, you really exemplify the motto, no excuses. But before we get into that, let's talk about the start of your journey. Um, I know that you have a rare disorder called Caudal Regression Syndrome. So tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's just a rare, it's just a rare uh, disease. Uh, that's not necessarily like, uh, there's like different levels of serious seriousness to it. Uh, for me, I just not, I don't have legs. I'm missing just a small portion of my spine. Uh, but there's, I can get severe too, where you're missing different body limbs, or uh, you could be com having to be completely normal. Uh, there's no telling because uh, how rare it is. Mm -hmm. But despite that, you know, you became a pro wrestler and I know you started in high school and university. So tell us about that and how it kind of helped you develop that no excuse attitude. 
Uh, you know, wrestling and just MMA in general, mixed martial arts in general, is the hardest thing you can do. Uh, and yeah. to, if you want to keep uh, pushing forward in it, and if you want to keep progressing in it, it's going to get harder as, the, as it goes, and you got to learn how to keep getting back up. And my thing was with that, I used to lose all the time. You know, I lost about 200 times before I even won wow. one. So uh, it's more about how persistent are you going to be and how you how like hard are you willing to work and how many times you're going to get knocked down or knocked out and get back up and press forward you know and that's kind of where i got it from and it makes everything else in life kind of easy you know absolutely you know what's funny is anytime i want to i i don't want to work out i watch one of your videos <laughs> and i'm like okay no excuses i'm gonna go absolutely. work out yeah i just have to watch one of your videos and it pumps me up and motivates me i want to talk about you know you're passionate about changing the foster care system uh you talk a lot about that in your netflix special zion so let's talk about you know those formative years in your life and growing up in the foster care system uh, you know, growing up in the system was tough. You know, I went through 11 different homes. And uh, it uh, during that time, that's about a 14-year period, 17-year period yeah. of uh, transitioning to home after home. And uh, I would say, I would say just, uh, you know, it made me grow up a lot quicker. It made me more mature. By the time I was 13, 14, I was thinking like an adult and handling my own stuff and trying to find my own food, find my own water, uh, trying to get clean clothes to be able to take showers. You know, it was a real, uh, on top of the abuse, it was real just, uh, a hard, it was a hard life, you know, being put in a neighborhood where uh, the, not everything's that great, being in a low income, poverty in a neighborhood makes things a lot harder on top of just being in the system. So with that being said, you know, just growing up, uh, just with all the circumstances I had, along well, long as well, long as, as well as the people I grew up with, my homies, we all struggled, and it was a really tough time just to try to survive. And the ones that are still here today were making the most of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you know, I want to talk about your documentary. It's so inspirational, and you know, the one thing that you really take away from it is your resiliency despite obstacles. So, how did you kind of face those challenges? and find the light at the end of the tunnel uh, despite it all i mean you gotta find you gotta find what you love you know i didn't set out with no mission to be an inspiration or set out with a mission to like all right i'm gonna do this because this is what i can do with my life no i'm, I'm an athlete you know uh, at the end of the day i like getting my hands dirty i like getting on the mat you know i like pushing the limits to see how far i can take this take this thing and uh yeah <laughs> i don't know how much to explain that Rather than that, you know, it's, um, I'm just uh, trying to just live, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, your documentary won several awards, despite, you know, you trying not to be an inspiration, but you are yeah. an inspiration around the world. Uh, how does it feel being a role model all over the world? Uh, it's a good <laughs> feeling, you know, every country that I go to, I have, a, I have millions of fans and stuff like that. It's really great, you know, and I appreciate every single one of them. You know, and uh, you know, the fact that I'm able to affect people on such a worldwide level is, um, you know, it's, uh, with that being said, you know, I need, I thought that, you know, I can still just do what I want to do, but at the end of the day, you know, there's a bigger purpose. There's a bigger meaning to what I'm doing. And I see that and I definitely take advantage of what I could use with my power to affect people on a bigger scale. Uh, but at the same time, I'm trying to just live my life still as it never happened, you know, and just trying to be Zion, me, myself. Yeah. And how has your life changed? I mean, you've become like this online celebrity. I mean, your documentary um, is all over the world on Netflix. So how has your life changed and what kind of feedback I mean, are you getting from we're, we're in the process of, uh, you know, I just have a couple books released, uh, oh, possible nice. movie deals and wow. all this other crap going on. And, uh, <laughs> Top of that, you know, as a speaker, I'm getting stages of people by the thousands. And so it's, uh, you know, I go up to a stage, I gotta go kill it every time. And it's getting kind of like breathing to me, you know, if that makes sense. And, um, you know, my life, I try to keep everything as normal as possible. Like I said, I'm, a pro, I'm an athlete, I'm a track and field athlete, I'm a fighter. You know, most of my energy goes into those, those sports. But on top of that, what's, what really put me on that platform is those things in general. So with that being said, I'm going to keep 
getting better, getting faster, getting stronger, getting more elite at what I'm doing uh, to possibly contend for a world title, world title or something in the near future. So, like, I, like if all the changes of my life, like a lot, of, a lot's changed, but it hasn't at the same time. And speaking about being an athlete, you were named the fastest man on two hands by the Guinness Book of Records. So, tell us about that title. Uh, I was honestly, <laughs> I was kind of wasn't that hard. Um, <laughs> You know, it was, um, it was like, you know, like I said, a lot of things you put your mind to, they can become easier and fun. I was just messing around. I didn't even know I was as fast as I thought. And then when I started putting in work, I was able to set the world record. So, um, it's just about applying yourself. And I just kind of wasn't applying myself, just having fun. And then I got approached by it, approached by Guinness. Next thing you know, I'm trying to get the world record, missed the sensor the first time and then set it the second time. Mm -hmm. And what was it about being an MMA fighter that like interests you and being an athlete? What was it that kind of sparked your your passion? I mean, I've been a wrestler and an athlete since I was six years old. I've I've have I have uh, I have just about twenty years of experience as a martial artist as it is right now. And so, with that being said, it's just a part of what I do. You know, uh, I don't really care to be an athlete other than any type of thing. I'm a fighter. Like my skill set is in hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and that's where I seem to excel at seems where I seem to thrive at and it's just because like, when you've been in when you've been in a sport as long as I have you know I'm 20 I'm 25 I, that's most of my life when you've been in, been in a sport as long as I have mm -hmm. and you're still like reaching newer heights and higher levels it's just a part of what you do. Mm -hmm. And what if the challenges that you face kind of taught you about life? Because I really like the fact that you, your no excuse attitude, I think it's really inspirational for anybody because, you know, excuses is what really holds everyone back, right? It's the excuses. But once you put those aside, I feel like anything is possible and you really exemplify that. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a mindset, you know. Yeah. It's the simplest thing for somebody to change their mindset to give themselves a better life is just am i gonna try again you know this sucked this was awful but am i going to get up and am i, am I gonna try again am i gonna or i'm gonna soap around mope around and feel sorry for myself you know for me i just accepted that life is gonna suck sometimes you know and it will but at the same time it, as much as it sucks it can also get just as just as just, it can get better just as much you know and that's how I looked at it, you know? I failed a lot to be where I'm at right now. I failed more times than I've had any success in my life. And I've had a lot of success, but I'm telling you, I've failed, I've failed more than that. And I think that what people could take from it is, you know, not my mantra, no excuses, but just uh, ironclad, an ironclad uh, mindset to where, you know, if something big fail or something sucks or something bad happens, you're able to just push forward and keep things moving. A lot of people get stuck in certain situations that they can't let go of. Sometimes you got to let go and step forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you need to fail in order to win. And I think a lot of people get stuck and when they fail, then they give up. But it's really in those failures that you can find success, right, if you keep going. So, so I like that you said that. And another thing I really like that you said is that, you know, you don't need legs to make a footprint on this earth. And so, so let's talk about that message because I, I really stuck with me. Uh, if I'm gonna be honest, it came to me during one of my speeches where I was just thinking as I was talking, you know, I'm able to actively talk and think at the same time to provide a good speech. And, uh, you know, I said that and the amount of response I got from the crowd was absolutely insane. Uh, wasn't expecting it to blow up as much as I, as it did, but to me, it was it's just a simple fact of life. Like I don't have legs, I'm still leaving an imprint on this planet. So why? What's to say you need to be normal to do so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a great message. And you know, I created my platform to inspire, to motivate, and to showcase anything is possible. So I want to ask you for anyone that's watching this, that's you know feeling defeated maybe feel like they don't fit in, maybe they're just not seeing their goals happen, they're putting in the work, but they're feeling frustrated. What would you say to motivate and inspire them? I would say stop, I would say stop thinking like that, take a deep breath, and look at, look at the things that are going well for yourself. 
you know, life, like, even in my life, where the, when things got to a point where they were just complete, when my life was complete crap, I still saw good things, out of it, good things that came out of it. You know, you need to sometimes, like I said, let go and focus on what really makes you happy, what makes you tick, what makes you, what gives you, what makes you feel alive, what makes you feel energized. And then go after that, work hard for those goals, set small goals for yourself and, pr- and to continue to grow those goals as you get along. Mm-hmm. And Zion, what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your life that really stuck with you? Uh, literally my coach just kind of smacked me and was like, no excuses. And yeah. told me I was gonna win, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it uh, kind of I kind of kept stuck with me. You know, and uh, next thing you know, I'm becoming an elite athlete. Yeah. And for some reason, that memory is just burned into my brain, so. Yeah, I have a, a motto on my fridge. It's like a um, a magnet, and it says, failure is not an option, so I, I like that, yeah. <laughs> and Zion, what else are you currently working on? I'm looking at my next fight, uh, potentially soon in the next five, six months or so. Uh, then after that, I am... Um, what else? Preparing for the Paralympic Games. Going to uh, make another run for the team this year. And then after that, you know, I'm working on movies, working on books, more books. I'm working on just traveling. You know, I just got back from Germany a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, you know, I'm keeping my travels up. I just got a new house. So currently I'm getting that all set up. So I'm really excited. And, you know, there's just, like I said, I'm living a normal life. You know, whatever happens, happens. I can't really get too many heads up. Very nice. Well, Zion, congratulations on all your success. I know you're not trying to, but you are inspiring a lot of people all over the world, even without trying. And um, I think it's amazing. And as I said, like, I, I really admire the work that you're doing. So keep it up. Continue being a fighter. And I can't wait to see what else is next for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Pack TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch live through YouTube and Facebook. Mm-hmm.